Hey there, viewers, and welcome back to Grumpy Monkey Garage. We're on part three of the Pontiac Grand Prix restoration. Today we're going to be taking care of some rear brakes, so it's going to be a pretty quick and easy video, but we're going to show you how to do brakes on any of these old General Motors products with these rear brake pads. So let's get started. All right, so when you've got the factory Pontiac wheels and somebody hasn't put some aftermarket nonsense or just a spare wheel on here and you've got the originals, they should have these plastic caps on them. We're missing four out of five, but that's okay. So we're not going to go ham with the impact taking it off. We're just gonna spin it off very gently. And it's just a little plastic cap. So you definitely don't want to sit there and hammer it away on or off. You just gently put them on. Sometimes I even recommend you take the socket off the impact and just twist it on or off by hand just so you don't tear it up. That definitely prevents problems. We're gonna put this one little lonesome guy back on. So I'm gonna put him up here on the trunk where I don't lose him. Now I'm gonna hammer all the lugs off of this thing. <laughs> or launch it to the oblivion. That's the wheel off. Move it out of the way so you can work. All right, next we're gonna remove our caliper here. We've got some bolts holding on. I didn't know what size they were gonna be, so I kind of brought everything. So I think these are maybe a 13. Let's find out. No, unless somebody put a 12 and a 13 spot, which I did not. So it might be a 14. I've got a lean. Yep. All right, 14's on GM. That's pretty weird, but whatever. So we're going to try to get these off. There's that one loose. Get this lower one loose. spinning out the guide pins now. Now the guide pins are very long. You need to note that the small one goes on the bottom, I believe, but this is the one that came off the bottom. They might be the same. I know some of these had a fat one and a skinny one, so you might want to notice. Uh, and these look about the same, but the rubber dongle goes on top. So we're gonna lay that out in the way we found it. So we'll lay that right here with the rubber dongle on the top position. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the caliper. They should just slide off. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they get pretty stuck. So what you can do is there's a little window in the top here. You can stick a screwdriver down inside here and actually push the piston back slightly. You just don't wanna to be too aggressive on the piston because if you damage the caliper, you're kind of screwed. So you wanna make sure that you're delicate when you're compressing it. But this one seems to have come off pretty easy, so we're good to go there. I'm gonna lay it over our control arm here. Maybe on this little ABS sensor instead. Um, just so that it doesn't fall. We don't wanna hang it by the brake line. It's not exactly a, a great plan. Now we need to get this bracket off in order to pull our rotor to get our rotor resurfaced. So that obviously sounds horrible. There's barely any pad left and that's why we're doing this job. So let's figure out what size that is. <laughs> it's a smaller size for the caliper bracket. It's a 13 millimeter. I don't know if this is an aftermarket caliper and bracket, but. And then there's another one. This upper bolt is gonna be easier to see on camera, but there's another one that goes through this bracket to this uh, caliper bracket itself. Um, so that's the one you're gonna to wanna to get. And there's two of them back there. So they look like this. They're big chonky boys. They got 13 millimeter head. 
but they're a significantly larger bolt. So don't lose these either. I don't think these are different like the guide pins are, but just in case, we're gonna do the same thing. Leave us a little mini map. Taking the lower one out now. Now here's our pad life. You can see that there is no pads at all left. And that's why we're performing this repair is to get rid of these god awful brake pads in there. We can set that aside, take our other bolt, put that on the bottom of our mini mat. And now the rotor, some of the newer GM rotors have a Torx bit or a screw that holds them on. On this particular generation, I guess they do not. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and pull this off. Now, if yours doesn't pull off that easy and they're stuck, make sure you have your e-brake off, your parking brake that is, because this in here is your parking brake shoe. And if your parking brake was holding onto the inside, obviously it's not gonna let you get the rotor off. So make sure your parking brake is released and also make sure that if it is stuck on here, it's just rust. You wanna make sure you didn't overlook any of those torque spits I was talking about. If it is rust and it doesn't wanna come off easily, you can actually hit this, what's called the hat of the rotor with a hammer. Make sure, don't use a mallet. You don't wanna be wussy sauce. You wanna really hit this thing, sledgehammer, ball peen, and just pound this thing and it'll shake up the rust and it'll allow it to come off. If that doesn't work, you can get behind it where the caliper just was and swing on it and actually force it off hitting it this way. And then of course you would spin it to the low side and hit it again until you eventually get it off. But ours behaved, so we're just gonna take that win and go. Now the rotors aren't too bad in this case. We probably could get away with just doing pads, but um, we have something special in store. We're actually gonna get these rotors machined and turned down to our local O'Reilly's and they're gonna turn them for us. And uh, we'll be putting them back on nice and smooth. Hey dear viewers, we're back now that we've gone to our O'Reilly's trip. What I did while we were gone is I actually had the lug nuts stored like this so that I wouldn't lose them so the dog or the cat didn't come by and knock the lug nuts to the abyss. I've still got my mini map laid out where everything goes and we'll be able to put this back pretty easy. So I'm going to take these off now. I only put them on three or four threads just enough so they wouldn't get knocked over and go somewhere. And I obviously didn't drive this car to the parts store with no brakes on it. Please don't do that. It occurred to me while I was there. I was like, oh Lord, I'm Definitely setting somebody up for failure, telling them that. Take another car. <laughs> um, next, we're gonna install our freshly smooth and surface rotors. Now what they did at O'Reilly's, as you'll see from this footage here, is they were able to take it and they cut the sides of the rotor, making it back smooth using a lathe. And this will get rid of any warpage or anything like that and make them back to be good brake rotors. So that's what they did. Go ahead and install these now. There we go. Um, Next, we're gonna address our pads. Now, I left them in the bracket. I think that's a great way to do this, um, just because you can remember which one goes where. Now, sometimes there's hardware on the inside. Looks like someone here put it on the outside. The one with the uh, hardware piece there, the indicator, needs to go towards the inside every time. So the last guy did not do this right. But make a note of those kinds of things in case it, you're trying to put it back together and can't figure out why it doesn't fit. It could be something as small as that. You might not, in fact, be doing anything wrong, just have these on inverted. So there's those two. We grab our new ones here. Now there's my wear indicator. So I'm gonna do the right thing and put it towards the back. Now you could do this on the car, fighting around the rotor, but you wouldn't be able to see anything I was doing if I did that, so I'm not doing that. I'm doing it out here. And then this outside one. Now sometimes if you order some really high dollar brake pads, they'll come with uh, new hardware. These did not. These are just regular old brake pads. The front does most of the stopping. This car is on a tight budget, so we're just going to do some good medium grade pads and not go with the cheapest, but also I'm not gonna spend a whole ton of money on it either. So there's that. Now we're gonna bolt this whole assembly right back up here. I'm turning the light on so you guys can see a little bit better. We're gonna bolt these back up. Now, if you remember, I laid my mini map, so this is my bottom bolt here. And my top bolt. And we're gonna get them both started before I snug them down in case you know you get it snug down and it's at a, a wrong angle. For instance, let me actually show you. If you bolted the bottom one down like this and then went to put the top one in, it wouldn't be in the correct place. So you just get in there a couple of threads and then line the top one up and then you can snug it down. But don't go hog wild and snug it down right away because then you're gonna have some issues. I'll take this here. Hope you can kind of see, move this out of the way. There we 
Great. And next what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to compress the caliper. So we're gonna get our calipre. Now to compress it, we're gonna use a special tool. If you do not have a special caliper tool, now granted, these are not expensive. If you're looking at this going, how can I BS this? This is okay. I got this from AutoZone. They're like 12 to $20 wherever you live. I mean, these aren't super expensive. I highly recommend getting one because it makes it easier. But if you don't have this and you're on a tight budget and $20 is $20, I totally understand that. If you need to get this back, you could put a C-clamp over this whole thing and just compress it with a C-clamp. And C-clamps are typically like three or four bucks, so that's significantly cheaper. Hopefully this will fit, but these pads are pretty low. Ah, we might have to do a little bit of, you're never supposed to push on the face like this, but it's too far out. So you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. We'll just squeeze it a little bit and to make sure we're not pushing it unevenly, we'll come over to this side, push a little bit over here too. And hopefully we can fit the pad in here. Yeah. Let me spin this up. Ha ha. Now this is the proper way to do it. So I had to start that. That's not really the correct way to do things, but sometimes stuff doesn't fit and you gotta make it work. So you gotta do things sometimes, even if it's not all the way the right way. This is the correct way though. You just use the old pad. And when you put the old pad on there, obviously you got two sides. You wanna make sure you're pushing against the ceramic. Don't push this really rough ceramic from the rotor into the piston, that's, that's not good. You wanna make sure you're pushing the back plate that was already on the piston into the piston. So that's how you wanna do that. Now, we'll reinstall the caliper, making sure we don't have any twists or tangles in our brake line. Right up here. Okay. Now, because I made my mini map, I know which one goes where for the guide pins. Put that right there. Pain. It and we're gonna run these in. I'm gonna run the bottom one in first. Sometimes they're a little hard to get in. This top one, really, this brake line is like right in the way. So you kind of got to do some shoving. You just want to be careful if your brake line is really old or really rusty, you don't want to break it. You could use a wrench for this, but I'm making mine work and this car seems to be in pretty good shape. I prefer sockets anyway. Now that it's tight, you just snug it. You do not need to murder tighten this thing. I mean, I'm sure there's a torque spec somewhere, some way, but you know, very tight because your life depends on your brakes, but you don't have to sit there and twist them until they strip out. Now the brake is completely assembled. We're good to go. Before you go for any kind of drive, you're going to make sure that you pump up the brake pedal. And then when you roll the car back and forth, you're going to drag the brake to really seat the pads on the freshly resurfaced rotor and you'll be good to go. Let's put the tire back on. All right, so when you're done with the brake job, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get in the car, crank it, and before you go driving off doing something stupid, pump the brakes up. You're just gonna gently, now don't kick them to the floor where you're gonna tear anything up. Just pump them where you'd normally pump them if you were in traffic. You move up six feet and hit the brakes, go down about that far until you start getting resistance in your pedal like now. That means you've seated the pads against the rotor. Now it's time to go for a test drive where you will drive in a straight line at a consistent speed and then hold the brake gently and drag it down to like 35 from 55. Really just drag it to seat those pads on that rotor. After you're done with that, you're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Grumpy Monkey Garage, a uh, part, I guess this is either two or three of the Pontiac Grand Prix restoration. And we'll see you next time.